Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Let's Play. I was a little bit lagging behind last week on this, and that's my bad. It was a pretty crazy week. We've been preparing a lot of things for May. In fact, one of those things I just prepared just happened while I was offline. A lot of Twitch stream-related stuff, uh, including a whole huge event uh, for the entire month of May. I just got a sub while I was in the middle. Shout out to Nighthawk. Since you subbed on Twitch, I'm not even live streaming on Twitch right now, but shout out to him for literally subbing as soon as I started talking about that in here in my local recording. So, uh, last time we did Never Reap, because I need gear before I can go into the Weeping City, so that would mean that this video should be Etherochemical Research Facility. So that's what we're going to do next. This is one of the other level 60 dungeons that you will get, one of the first level 60 dungeons that I should say, and it's, it's similar in difficulty than ever to Never never reap but in my opinion it's a much better put together dungeon in pretty much every way i find the aesthetics far more pleasing even after doing the binding coil all throughout a realm born if you didn't do that then you'll probably like it as well i mean it shares that aesthetics with things like uh, atherochemical research facility uh, the rest of as law it's very elegant themed and i feel like it's very straightforward yet very fun dungeon obviously we're going to be over geared uh you know pretty heavily when it comes to this dungeon, so it's not really going to contain all the same thrills that it did back when I remember it. But you know what? It's actually a good thing for me to be going into these dungeons and kind of reminding myself what it was like when Heaven's Word first came out. Um, you know, what the difficulty of the dungeons was like, you know, because I'm going to have to get used to farming these things a lot <laughs> when it comes to progression in uh, 4.0, so... I hope whatever the 4.0 equivalent to Never Reap and Etherochemical Research Facility, I hope whatever they are, that they are, well, fantastic. I fly in the wrong direction? I could have swore I was flying in the... Oh, no, 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 wait. Wait. No, I... Wait. Hold on. <laughs> Where am I going? Oh, it is here. Yeah, what the heck? It says it's right here. Like, what's not popping up on my minimap? That's so weird. Look at my minimap. It's not there. But it's here. I wonder if it's because I'm not tracking it. It's got to be because I'm not tracking it. Hold on. Let me let me track it. That's probably all it is. Yep. Now it's on my minimap. I don't know why that weirded me out so much. I guess it's, it has been a really, really long time since I've had so many quests on a character that I couldn't track them. Man, that that's... Okay. I got to remember that when the next expansion comes out as well. Uh, for the next few episodes, so I want to really blitz some of these episodes towards the ends of end of May, like get a crazy amount of things done, catch up on the main story and have Healer Happy ready for Stormblood. But I also want to do a separate video that I almost kind of want to tie into the Let's Play series, but at the same time, I really need to make it its own thing. It needs to be edited differently. It can't be in this Let's Play style. Uh, with preparation for Stormblood. You know, I did one for Heaven's Word where I told people, hey, this is what I'm doing to get ready. Here's what you can do to get ready. Here's, you know, how important each of these different tasks are. You know, what effects they may or may not have on your actual progression. And uh, that worked out really well. And I definitely want to do that before Stormblood. I feel like I have more than enough time. So it's just a matter of uh, me doing it. I gotta take some time to do it. That's the bottom line. So this is, there we go. So the Fractal Continuum, I didn't remember this was even the entrance to the Fractal Continuum. So the Fractal Continuum is the other one of the beginner dungeons for uh, 3.0. You know, as soon as you finish the main story, these are one of those, this is a, a set of dungeons, this and Never Reap, that you can hop into and start collecting tombstones, first time bonuses, maybe even potential gear pieces if you, uh, if you didn't have any gear pieces as soon as you hit 60. So, and again, keep in mind once Stormblood comes out, that process may change. You may still want to do these for, like, first-time bonuses to pick up gear for alternate characters or, you know, I don't know, maybe in anticipation of future quests that may require the Tome Zones or just to complete it because you don't want quests present. Uh, but it won't. this probably won't be as important going into the expansion. So we're going to go over here, the Fractal Continuum. The minimum item level to enter is uh, 150. The average item level is 145, huh? I always thought it was 150, but that's because... People used to cheese the minimum item level by buying really crappy I-150, like, white grade pieces. Like, they were worse than the other gear. They were just higher item level. Um, and then they would cheese this, and it was a nightmare. That doesn't really happen anymore. And I'm, from the way they're describing 4.0, that won't happen in 4.0, because they'll give you a set of armor with the level 70 job quests. 
So uh, let's queue in. I can't imagine this queue will take all that long. Probably a few minutes like Never Reap did. So I'm going to edit out me waiting for the duty finder so you, go, get, so you guys don't have to suffer through it. And I'll be back as soon as my queue pops. Oh, all right. Ah, there we go. I was just reading through YouTube comments, as a matter of fact. I just posted a video. Oh, wow, look at that. Nobody forgot to press yes. In fact, I was the last person to press yes. They were yelling at me, the thing I usually do every episode. So, Fractal Continuum. Very straightforward dungeon. Healers, this can be quite difficult for you if your tank goes ham and it is your first time. And it's all Lollafells. <laughs> In a sea of a sea of tiny tanks, ninjas, and bards. You have me. <laughs> so it can be pretty tough, um, or it used to be a lot more tough. If your tank isn't geared and they try to go ham on these big pulls, it's probably going to cause some issues. I wonder if they're busy trying to kick me from the party because I'm not a Lalafell. If so, I am absolutely including that in the YouTube video. Let's see. What do we got here? I wouldn't, you know, I have heard rare stories of that happening. Team? 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 Oh no, don't tell me. Don't tell me it's happening. Have I Have I found that instance where they refuse to play? Oh, one sec. Okay, never mind. Okay, they communicated. They said one sec. I thought I'm going to type. I thought you were going to wait 5 minutes and kick me because I'm not Lala. <laughs> I had I had I had to type it. I thought you were gonna wait five minutes to kick me. Oh well, we could. <laughs> you know, it's times like this where I almost I I keep the thing over the chat as like a precaution in case you know like things people are trying to communicate. People don't want their names or you know I don't know. It's just whatever. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a thing in case people don't want to be seen. Whatever they don't want to see their text to be seen. But with when I'm part of the interaction, it's a very different story. <laughs> It's also so you're not reading that the entire time. Alright, so the first pull here is pretty simple. It's going to be these two mobs. And you could choose to just pull those two mobs, but honestly, these two mobs on their, on their own are not too threatening. And then you have uh, these guys right here. I'm going to see how far he takes them. So this is the maximum number of enemies you could pull at this point. Because um, it's, like, it's just impossible for you to pull anymore. So I'm going to do that. So yeah, our tank has got a he's got a good rotation of cooldown, so I should be able to output some pretty decent DPS here. I'm gonna do another holy. He's also not a dark knight, so I could just go ham here with the holies. Oh, I got a free cure too. Let me use that real quick. All right. So pretty simple. Uh, the only reason why I give you a little bit of warning on that pull is sometimes tanks go pretty ham on pulls without any cooldowns. That's always going to cause problems. It doesn't matter what dungeon you're doing. But this one in particular, I, it's just, I guess, my old memories of this place kind of, you know, coming to the surface when it's not really an issue anymore. One thing that would have definitely helped on that pull would have been a, an eye for an eye. I'm going to use it on this pull, though. This pull has a lot more little enemies. Uh, these guys right here, all these mannequins. So I'm going to give him eye for an eye on this one. And so there's a conjurer over there. I highly recommend if you're a tank, uh, you pull your adds towards that conjurer. Because otherwise he's just going to stay at a distance. He'll probably annoy your healers a little bit. And you don't want that. Oh, that Doton looks so beautiful on those multiple targets. It's a beautiful sight. They also don't have a whole lot of health, as you can see. So this pull should actually be pretty quick, especially if you as the healer are helping out. I'm not even going to bother with another regen on him. I will get a stone skin, however. I'll stone skin this person, too. I could do a uh, swift cast stone skin, too, I suppose, but it's not really needed. And then you're already at the first boss. Nice and simple. In case you're wondering what these guide panels do, there's lore about this zone on those guide panels. Uh, you don't have to stop and read them in the middle of the dungeon. Um, you can actually read them after the dungeon. It's up to you. Alright, I'm going to give him a basic one to start a basic regen. So this boss is pretty simple. He basically just does a bunch of AoEs. He also hits the tank actually pretty hard, admittedly. Um, you can see that rapid sever attack. It's multiple times. 
So uh, keep that in mind. Your tank is not going to take all their damage all at once. Worth remembering. And then this, he'll always do them in a, an alternating form. So you saw he did forward and back, and then he did left and right. Now, it's not always going to be that exact same order, but it will always be... Yeah, so in this one, he turns and actually faces people. So this is a little bit different, as you can see. And then he also drops AoEs on the ground. He'll do that on occasion. He'll, like, drop a... Uh... I don't have any sort of mitigation for them for this next one. I'm actually going to... Oh, he's using more than enough mitigation. I'll just give him divine... There you go. And he can have... I was going to give him a Tetra, but I forgot what button it was on. I saw the Tetra. Oh, it's my uh, it's my circle button. Get a little bit more deeps out there. I don't know why I turned that off to, uh, to give him that. It's really no point. And that's it. I mean, that's pretty much it. He'll just steadily do more and more damage. Every time he does that little buff right there, he's going to turn and do this attack. And then you just got to dodge it. Simple as that. And then he'll do, I think, one more tank buster right here. Yeah. I'm not going to use a... Uh, I'm not going to use my eye for an eye. It's available right now, but I'm not going to use it. If anything, I should have used this. Oh, and I'm not using a side. This happened in the last video, and so I told people to call me on it in the comment section. And you did. I read the comments. You did the right thing. There. Look. I did it. <laughs> it's bad. That's what happens. That's what happens when you're just not practiced on a job on a, on a controller, man. Excuses. Excuses. It's all right. I did it. I did it before the second boss this time. Uh, okay. So we got summoner gear. Doesn't really matter. I could get it for Grand Company Seals, but, uh, meh. I mean, you know me. I don't really need anything. I got all my, my gear upgraded. So, it's all a matter of picking up Lore Tome Stones at this point. Lore Tome Stones, and I could always use some more Clan Seals. But, uh, you know, I don't really play this character frequently enough now to, to really make use of the Clan Seals. I'm going to turn off Cleric Stance here. Tur starts, actually. This pull is a nightmare. Don't be surprised if you're a new healer and your tank literally goes beyond ham this pull and your team dies. Like, this pull, even to this day, can still be a disaster. So those Ixalians that you see have a giant AoE that if you don't silence or stun it, it does a pretty reasonable amount of damage. You have two Ixalians, and then on top of that, it looks like we los one of them. And then on top of that, he's going to pull this, that Flawless Naga. It also has an AoE attack that should be stunned or something. So... Yeah, so that's one of the attacks right there. And it, it's, you know, with the damage that comes out to the tank here is not insignificant. I'm just saying that this is a pull where you probably don't want to mess around. If you want to play it safe in DPS here a little bit more, especially if you're, like, I'm looking at his cooldowns. He's, he just put Rampart up, so I should be okay to deeps here. But there should be another AoE coming out here in a second too, yeah. So I'm going to make sure that I get those things taken care of first. And then DPS. Remember, only be DPSing if you're 100% confident that you've freed up enough time to do so. Yeah, he's fine. I forgot where my hollowed button was. I'm not going to lie. I was it, was it was right here. I'm not hollowed. He hollowed. Uh, I forgot where my benediction button was. This is a really big problem that I really need to solve, but you know how the easiest way for me to resolve this? Record these videos more frequently. So realistically, I could have just kept DPSing and used uh, Hollow Ground there. I'm, I keep saying it. No, he used Hollow Ground. I could have kept DPSing there and just bennied the tank. And honestly, it should have been really easy. The whole reason why I put Benediction on that exact button is... So the heck? Yeah, so this one you have to kill these three on their own. Some people pull it all the way. Most people just don't pull it all the way to here. Um, but yeah, you have to kill these three ads, and then three ads will come out of the uh, the tubes behind us. Yeah, that's why I put Benediction next to Holy, so I could literally be holying and then just press the button next to it. I just forgot where it was. That's all. <laughs> and also, you know what else I didn't do that pull? I'm sorry. <laughs> Remember when, at least the good news is, if you watch all the previous episodes for when I was, like, doing this daily, that I remembered those things and I would say them then. That's just not me anymore. That's just not my... I just covered me. 
Yeah, so he covered me because he had, uh, I think he still had a regen left. And so, when, if I have a regen, I'm probably going to take a few autos. He can just cover me on those and we're good. There we go. Stun that Ram's voice. If you don't stun it, it's going to freeze you and it's going to do quite a bit of damage. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's make a checklist for abilities we should not forget to do on this next one. This next this next fight is sometimes a little bit more healer centric, more so because you have responsibilities outside of uh, of actually DPSing on this next one. <laughs> outside of DPSing, outside of healing, outside of healing and DPSing, healers regularly get thrown kind of under the bus with the mechanics on this next fight. So, size, this is off cooldown. I've got Tetra. I've got Benny. Hill. I've got I. I'll give him I to start. So this boss actually does pretty pathetic damage. But you notice that there's four biomass incubators. So those are going to come into play a little bit later. And there's an interesting way you can use them to not really cheese the fight, but make it a little bit easier. So 111 ton swing. You're actually going to want to stay the hell away from him. When he does that. Now, normally you only open them when he's about to do his super, super attack. What you can do instead is you can actually interrupt one of his attacks where he charges around the room by doing it a little bit earlier. When you open one of these, he'll immediately retarget them and, and feast on it. Now, a mechanic you didn't see right there was actually a mechanic where he charges around the room three times and then does a giant conal slash in the direction of... Uh, of one of the other people. I interrupted it by opening the biomass incubator a little bit early. He's gonna now this is the mechanic where you're supposed to use the biomass incubators. You open the biomass incubators to summon the ads so it stops him from doing this AoE. That's the main reason why they're supposed to be used. The other way I use them, just a, a creative solution, pretty much. To uh to not needing to do a specific mechanic for this fight. Now, to keep in mind that if your DPS is incredibly low, you probably don't want to do that. The main reason being that if you run out of those and you get to that big, big attack again, it's going to be a bad time. Even that, even that attack you can see isn't really all that threatening. There, see, that's the attack you interrupt. He was about to do it. He was in the middle of casting it, and I'm Cleric Stance Healing. And, uh, yeah, we interrupted it. And now there's still one left. He's going to do the 10 ton slash over there. He's going to turn around. He's going to do the other one. And we should be able to kill him without needing to open the other biomass incubator. Shouldn't be a reason to. I'm just going to go full DPS here. There's no point in opening the biomass incubator. All right. Nice and good. A lot of the times the healers have that ability thrust upon them to use that... Uh, to actually do the biomass incubators because there's no damage going out at that point and you can leave your tank and your dps on the boss full time and you can kill them a lot quicker but that doesn't mean only healers are expected to do it don't be surprised if somebody else takes that responsibility all right so that's already two-thirds the way through the dungeon we're only what was that the 13 excuse me the 13 minute mark so these next parts you can do in a semi-random order so you're set onto three platforms pretty much this first plas platform has just a bunch of pretty weak adds. They, they hit pretty frequently, so the damage here can be significant, but most of the time they die so quick it doesn't even matter. So you just gather up all eight of these monsters. You know, you'll just grab over there, then he'll run over here, and that pulls the ones over there. Good time to use eye for an eye, of course. And then you uh, just kill them. Pretty simple. Every time you kill all the enemies on a platform, see that place where they're tethered to, the, the Tomlith over there? You will have to go interact with it. So what I like to do is I throw off a few holies, and as they're about to die, I walk over and I take control. Now, this is where you find out a lot about your party. This is where you find out everyone's either a go-left guy or a go-right guy. So you could choose to do this part in either order. You can go left first or you can go right first to take care of the other platforms. We're going right first, so we are going to be doing the Immortalized Colossus and two of those little tiny clockwork enemies from the last one. The Colossus is kind of annoying. He just, uh, 
he just sometimes targets other people with like AoEs and stuff. It's it's not that bad, and he's also got a pretty big cleave, as you saw right there. Nothing major. Now on these other two platforms, one additional type of add is going to be summoned. Uh, you're going to see them spawn right next to the tome lift that this thing is tethered to eventually. And what those oh that hurt. And what those guys will do is they'll uh, they'll drop AOEs on the ground. Oh, see, here's the burn. See what I said when he just targeted? See those AOEs that are dropping on the ground? Now, you do not have to step in those. If you do, you'll be bound until you kill these immortalized interceptor drones. What most people do is they literally just don't touch these clockwork reservoirs. And they just kill the ads. They just avoid stepping in them. And then you kill all the ads and those puddles will disappear and you don't have to kill them. That didn't happen. We had to kill one of the reservoirs. The other one we left alive, which is fine. And now we'll move on to the final section. You can see kind of what I mean by why. I guess you guys may kind of understand why I think this dungeon's more fun than... Uh, why aren't you Lalfell again? Alt. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then this one, same deal, those ads will still spawn, but this time it's the claw as well as this giant mob that does a lot of uh, guidance system interruptions. So as a healer, you may find yourself getting interrupted fairly frequently here. Same deal, we're just going to holy a bunch and then ignore the AoEs and the ads that come out. See? Spawn right on top of us too. And they also shoot AoEs at the bound people, by the way. Alright, and then as soon as you open the final control unit, the boss will spawn in the middle. Now this boss, I mean this kind of goes without saying, but this boss is easier the faster you kill him. Basically, every time he gets through a spell rotation, he... Somebody else just subbed on Twitch Prime. <laughs> He's having twice in one video, Sadris. Oh, you're getting YouTube shoutouts for it as well. What do you know? So this boss, I as a healer like to take a lot of responsibility, but there's a lot of responsibility here that belongs on the DPS. So this is something that only more experienced healers should probably be doing. So what he's doing right now is he's doing a strat that's sometimes used, sometimes not. A lot of people don't bother with this, but it is a matter of efficiency. So you're going to have these clockwork alarms that spawn. And what they'll do is they'll slowly cover the arena in these uh, squares until they walk pretty much across, all the way directly across. And, oh, this is an important one. I'll get back to that mechanic because it's going to happen a second time in a little bit. I don't know why he's facing a group right now. It's uh, not a safe direction to be facing. Kind of making me do a but. What are you, why are you there? Like, I understand that I can move, but it's just uh, such an inconvenient spot to be holding the boss. So he's going to place this debuff. See that bomb debuff on that guy? He's kind of glowing. Asuna it. Asuna, leeches, doesn't matter. Do something to get rid of it. There you go. And then eventually the boss does this attack, the educator. And if you're standing on any one of the lit up platforms, including the ones that the ad summoned, it gives you Volnsax and does a considerable amount of damage. I didn't use... Listen, I know I didn't use a size on the ads at all. All right, my bad. <laughs> And now, now that he's been through one entire rotation, he's also going to start laying mines down on the field. So, don't touch the mines. Definitely don't touch the mines. Kill the adds. Now, normally, when I'm a little bit more geared, and I guess I'm a little more prepared to do so, I'll actually just straight up... Uh, I'll straight up solo all the adds. I don't care if it's one, two, three adds. I'll do it. That's not the case today. <laughs> Just, just so we're clear, that's that's not what's happening right now. More bombs. And speaking of which, the bomb debuff. Now you saw that guy got a bone stack. It's because he stood directly under the ad that he was killing. So that also will get you bone stacks. Now we should be able, honestly, to just zerg the boss at this point. Don't forget about LBs, by the way. I'm not going to touch these ads. We should just be able to straight up kill the boss without me needing to do any more healing. Hey, there's the LB. Yeah, we're fine. And now he also starts dropping AoEs on the party on top of the mines. 
So as you can see, every time he gets through a spell rotation, more adds start walking across. He starts summoning the mines, more AoEs go off. You know, it just gets gradually more, you know, AoE heavy and, you know, more mechanics start spawning. So it definitely benefits you to kill that boss as quickly as humanly possible. I give it to the tank. Tank did a really good job. Tank did an excellent job. Have fun not Lala thing. Heart. <laughs> I have a feeling, the way they played, I have a feeling they were all friends. So, that's cool. It's always nice being, yep, they were. So, you know what's a really easy way to know if you were the lone person who queued into a dungeon? If you get three player commendations when you didn't use the size more than three times in the entire dungeon. And you know they knew that you didn't use it three times in the entire dungeon. But they were probably appreciating, you know. Tank almost had the one death because I forgot where Benediction was on my bar. That's kind of just me not playing this character enough. Um, and then everything else uh, went pretty smoothly for that. I feel like I conveyed most of the points I needed to. Last boss, I mean, healer DPS really helps push that one really fast. It's really not needed, though. Uh, especially if your DPS themselves are pulling, like, a lot of weight. You'll probably kill the boss at about that time um, with a decent group, regardless of healer DPS. So, uh, it's just always, you know me, I'm always, not, not saying it's mandatory, but I'm always kind of promoting the idea and showing you what the result of that is. If you're willing to go out of your way, maybe perhaps out, way out of your comfort zone even, to uh, produce that extra amount of DPS, you know. So that is the other level 60 dungeon that you'll run into at first. Now, of course, those were just dungeons from 3.0. We still have the dungeons from 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, and, of course, 3.5. So, in total, there's 10 more level 60 dungeons for me to unlock and beat in videos. That means there's at least 10 videos. On top of that, we have the Weeping City and... Uh, and the and Dunscathe, which I'm assuming will be fairly populated all the way up to the week of the expansion because people are trying to gear up jobs uh, in preparation for the expansion. We also have Alexander to check out, uh, although I have, a, I have a feeling doing some of the earlier Alexanders is going to be a little bit tough. So much so to the point where I may live stream those Healer Happy recordings as part of my uh, anniversary event over on Twitch. I think that might be the best way for me to get caught up on Alexander because I can always just go to my stream and be like, hey... You know, I don't want to get carried on a, on a, my controller character because I'm not very good on it, but I also don't want to sit in the duty finder for 45 minutes because I don't know how long it's going to take to get a Gordius party even as a healer. So we'll see what actually ends up happening with that one, but I really got to blitz some of these recordings in the coming weeks. Tonight is not that night, though. I got some other stuff to work on, and I got to get this rendered and ready for Tuesday. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. Thank you again to the Patreon uh, supporters for bringing the series back. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. Check out our Patreon. Uh, I should probably start using that a little bit more. Um, but things have been great, so I'm glad with what it's been doing. It's not much, but it doesn't need to be much. It's just there as an additional option. So thank you, those of you who have been supporting it over there. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, so thank you for watching. I'll see you then, and until then, take care.